regard to embryonic stem cells oh, yeah. by a variety of assays. And, you know, I don't think I'd be, I don't think it'd be well advised for us anyway to invest, sort of diversify the disease portfolio until we can make some, you know, progress in this area. I also think that, you know, in a way now, making, you know, making the iPS cells is a useful thing. Um, and it'll be good to have, you know, core labs that can do this if we're setting one up at the Stem Cell Institute. Um, but now the interesting and challenging thing is to use those uh, to understand why, why the people get sick. And, um, you know, sort of like now, gene targeting is the easy thing to do. Um, you can make the mutant animals, but figuring out why they get sick and really understanding that in a sophisticated way has been more of a challenge. So um, I think that's what we're facing now. You know, they have to understand this before they can do the interesting mechanistic disease experiments. I have a couple of people that are from New York. cells for chromosomal analysis to a PGD lab. It's all a good sense of whether or not that's the problem. That's really the problem. Mm -hmm. It may be, it may, uh, you know, our a sort of pet theory is that it may be that um, when you take out the spindle, you deplete, you know, just like taking out the nucleus is obviously bad. So if you take out the spindle, you might deplete spindle components or uh, microtubule motor proteins, which are important for normal um, mm. you know, cytokinesis and, and the chromosome segregation. And so basically trying to find new ways to uh, replace sort of to either replace them or to you know, disrupt the spindle architecture, architecture in a way that allows them to diffuse away from the chromosomes. Ready? Actually.